بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم my dear vascular colleague um, another quick presentation on the vascular part uh, TOT courses in the duplex ultrasound um, I think in your vascular career you need to grab a lot of vascular skills you need to grab vascular duplex skills um, you need to have uh, surgical tool skills you need to have to take a history skills how to do examination skills how to discuss cases skills so there are a huge amount of skills that you need to grasp and it's very important for these skills to be documented so you have it to be certified with a certificate and you must arrange the priority because you need to have a CT scan skills, you need to have an MRI imaging skills, and I think one of the very important skills is the duplex ultrasound. Uh, you must have a very good skills in vascular ultrasound to read the report, but not only this, you must know how to do vascular duplex ultrasound, as we said, in the last lecture, it will help you a lot. You will do endovenous laser ablation yourself. You do a lot of duplex guided uh, procedure. And now the uh, femoral puncture should be done duplex guided. So you will not get someone to do duplex for you to do the puncture. So I think duplex skills is an essential skill. Now, I was always told that it's impossible for you to make a vascular duplex scan online course because this is a hands-on and you must get the uh, participant to hold the duplex scan in their hand. I think I can do an online vascular duplex course with the current equipment. It is no need even for Apple Vision Pro. Uh, glasses which is too expensive but I think if you have the knowledge if you know what you are looking for regarding the hand skills it shouldn't be difficult and in this course we have an on-site so you can come and do the duplex scan as next Thursday you can do upper limb venous duplex scan and you can have an online participation with questions and we also have put uh, a helping factor, which is the uh, duplex books, duplex video, and a lot of vital information. Uh, all of them is with Dr. Muhammad Ahmed. He is uh, responsible for all the uh, arrangement for the vascular duplex scan in vascular art. I hope you all can join us, the online participation and the on-site participation in a journey to learn how to do vascular duplex scan. Next week we will be doing uh, upper limb venous duplex scan from 9 to 11 Cairo time. You are all welcome uh, to join and participate with your questions. Now I hope you can join us if you have time regarding the duplex scan as we meet every Thursday from 9 to 11 Cairo time you can join us on the link which I will post to you uh, in the uh, comment section of this video next week we will be discussing upper limb duplex scan last week last Thursday we've been discussing lower limb venous duplex scan and you can enjoy a big library of uh, vascular dupes and vascular videos as well. And uh, have all the question, I would like you to read a chapter about how to do venous duplex scan. You can put it in Google and you can get plenty of uh, material for you to read about before we do it. And this is um, uh, what we call flipped classroom technique. Uh, which is now a standard in medical education. So you need to read about it, then see the live session uh, to answer your question, 
and then you can continue reading. And this is the uh, flap uh, uh, classroom technique, which we will be using in all these courses. Here is some of the questions that has been asked from the last session on lower limb veins. One of the questions was, which information do I need to know on any vein? And there are six. You need to know it's patent or not, diameter, is it refluxing or not, is there is any wall abnormality regarding previous thrombosis or autoimmune disease uh, or any wall abnormality. And you, you must also know Doppler waveform inside the blood vessel and the thrombus ecogenicity to give an idea about the age of the thrombus. So the answer is six elements. This is what you need to know about any vein you insinuate. Now, another question was, what is B-mode image and what it means? This is an example of B-mode image of the aorta. Here is the uh, upper aorta. Here is aneurysmal dilatation in the middle. And here is the lower abdominal aorta. B-mode image stands for uh, brightness. So... Uh, this is the blood flow going like this. This is the aortic aneurysm. And some people call it grayscale image. And it is basically uh, just to give you anatomy of the structure you are looking at. It doesn't give you any more. You don't know if this is patent or occluded. You don't have information about Doppler spectral waveform. So this is the B-mode image, which we always start with. Another question, what is color Doppler and what is angle mean? And this is very important. Um, after having the B-mode image, you can have this, um, uh, what is called the color window, which is like a box. This box of color window, which you can see here, is actually just giving color information about blood flow. If the blood flow towards the probe, it will become red. Away from the probe, it will become blue. And this is, you can reverse it. You can make it blue going towards the probe and away from the probe is red, it doesn't matter. But the main thing is not to make your color square to be perpendicular. You must have an angle with the color probe like this angle here you can see the probe uh, color window is having a an angle like this so um, you don't need uh, in the color to be perpendicular because you wouldn't get color you must have just oblique view to have an angle, so bloods, if the blood is going towards the probe, it will show in red color. Away from the probe, it will show in blue color. And this is an important element. So this is a color doubler which gives you the flow direction. And here you can see the color doubler information. As you can see, when the blood flow is going away from the probe, it becomes blue. When it is going inside, going toward the probe, it will become red in color. So this is the color angle and the color Doppler, which have a color information about the blood flow inside the blood vessel. Another question, how blood vessels show in Doppler? And this is an important question. Here is an example of common carotid external internal carotid artery. And here how it looks on Doppler. This is the B image or gray scale. As the ultrasound wave is uh, reflected. So you can see the image when the ultrasound beam is reflected on the anterior wall, posterior wall of blood vessel. It gives you this image. So this is the image of the blood vessel on a Doppler, just a reflection. Uh, but here we don't have either color information or a spectral Doppler. 
question what what is a spectral doppler and this is very important the spectral doppler is when you after you done the b mode image and you done the color you need to get information about the blood flow and the way you do that as you can see here is the um, ultrasound beam is this arrow and this is the angle between the blood vessels so the blood vessel is going this direction so this is the doppler angle which should be 60 or less than 60 and this is the sample volume because we know that in the blood vessel there is a laminar blood flow so blood is the fastest in the middle and it is a slower on the sides so this is a sample that you are going to get the information and this is the ultrasound beam so you must know two direction the ultrasound beam direction and the blood vessel direction and the angle between both of them or is called the doppler angle which should be 60 or less and then you will get this wave form which is important for you uh, to know the waveform of the blood vessels. Now, another question is what is the color angle? Um, if you are perpendicular to blood vessel, you wouldn't get, because the blood flow is not toward the probe or away from the probe, so you wouldn't get color. But you see this blood vessel is, is not really transverse. It's going a little bit upward direction. So this angle here, you might say it is perpendicular on the blood vessel. So this is a color beam, and this is the blood vessel is perpendicular. So you wouldn't get color information, but you make an angle here. The blood vessel uh, is going toward the probe. You will get a lot of better color. So how good is your color will depend on the angle or the color angle that you have toward the blood vessel, either toward the probe or away from the probe. And this is important, and this is called the color angle. After that, there was another question, which is how color flow doubler looks like in common carotid artery. Common carotid artery have a special peculiarity that you see there is a little bit of reverse blood flow here. So the blood flow from common carotid to internal carotid artery and you get a little bit of reverse direction swirl at the at the pulp of the beginning of internal carotid artery and this shows in color here beautifully you can see the blood flow common carotid artery in red because it's toward the probe and then becomes blue because it's away from the probe and this is how the color flow looks common carotid artery we'll have the carotid session at the end of the course just to give you the information so this is uh, the answer to the question. <laughs> now, what is sample volume? Uh, also another good question. Sample volume is the volume of the blood that you are sampling. So for example, if you are sampling, volume is quite big. So you have the artery and the vein in the sample volume then you will get as you can see here arterial sample and venous sample on the same chart and we should do that we should be getting the middle of the blood stream the laminar flow in order to get just the sample window sufficient to get the information about the blood flow into that area and this is the what is known as sample volume which you can increase and decrease with the machine. What is calcification looks like on ultrasound? Well, calcification is the enemy of ultrasound. Air is another enemy of ultrasound. So you can see here is a common carotid artery and here is the area of calcification. You wouldn't get any information after. That's why you need to look into certain window for you to able. We see this in the common carotid artery and also in diabetic and TBL tibial vessel you see this areas of calcification but after lithotripsy this area disappear um, what is a doppler angle very important we said there is a color angle and there is a doppler angle doppler angle is the the angle between the uh, the transmitter 
and the Doppler ultrasound beam, which is this one, and the blood flow. So you can see you have here two lines. This is the line of ultrasound beam, and this is the line of the blood flow in the blood vessel. And the angle between both of them is called the Doppler angle. And if it is more than 60, it's not accurate at all. If it is 60 or below 60, then it is an angle, and this is the information we rely on. And this is very important because when you are assessing stenosis, if your angle is wrong, you will get wrong estimation of the stenosis. So this is the Doppler angle that you need always to, uh, to know for your uh, patients. Definition of Doppler angle, sometimes this comes to the question, uh, sometimes you've been asked this in, in the, your exam. Doppler angle is the angle between ultrasound beam and blood flow. And the best uh, angle obtained will be angle zero, but you cannot have an angle zero because you can't have the probe parallel to your blood vessels. So uh, we have, uh, or let us say the ultrasound society have um, have mentioned that 60 degree Doppler angle is the standard because this you will get the least error in velocity measurement and anything below 60 is also accurate so 60 or below now the new machine have what is called automatic angle so it will give you the automatic angle adjustment of your beam and uh, this is uh, also to make your uh, examination to be much simpler so I hope after this uh, quick um, answering to the question and uh, overall uh, look at the Vascular Duplex uh, virtual course, we hope to see you on Thursday, 28th of March with upper limb venous duplex scan. Read a little bit about it and I hope uh, we can see you next Thursday, Thursday and I wish you all the best. Thank you very much.